It's the Mark Tobin design. No, oh, shoot, I got that wrong. I've been working on this for 15 minutes. I couldn't even get it right. The Mark Tobin Kitchen Design Hour with your host, Mark Tobin. I need a jingle. Mark Tobin Kitchen Design, yeah. Something like that. Anyway, I have way too much time on my hands. <laughs> but if you caught that live, amazing. I hope you're having a great whatever time of day it is. Good after morning. Okay. And we'll go from there. We're going to talk about 24 kitchen design tips made easy. We're going to look at an article tonight that I found on the interweb somewhere. I think it's from Good Housekeeping or House and Home or Gardens and Homes. And it doesn't even matter. We're going to look through this article, look through some of the tips about kitchen design. We're going to chat about them because there's a lot of information out there. Let's see if this article has anything good, valuable to maybe we could take from. So maybe stuff we know, maybe stuff we don't know. I only looked at a couple of these, so I kind of really sifted through. So a lot of these are a surprise to me. But if you're joining me, wherever you're joining me from, from sea to shining sea or from whatever continent in the world you're at, make sure you put it in the chat and say hello. Let me know where you're from. And we'll chat up a storm a little bit later on. So... Yeah, let's get into this article and we will go from there. And I thank you for jumping on so saying hi already. And uh, let's just start this way because why not? It's my show, right? Uh, Bluebell from New Jersey. Thanks for jumping on. Yes. Good evening from the UK. Awesome. Yeah, it's late. But thanks for taking a little bit of time before you go nappy nappy to uh, to join the live stream. And Helga, yay, yeah, finally caught the live stream. Awesome. I am glad that you are here. We're going to jump into uh, the content here. And uh, of course, if you're not on a device where you can chat or do whatever, or especially give a thumbs up, I think you can give a thumbs up on any device. But if you're on a device where you can't enter into the chat, be sure to just applaud or wave at the screen or something. <laughs> it's just, I can't help it. It's been a beautiful day here today, so I have sunstroke, and it's going to be a wonderful night. All right, let's get into this. Gary, great, great. Um, so this is the article I want to share with everybody. It's 24 kitchen remodeling tips for a successful renovation. We're going to look at this. Oh, and before we get going, there is a poll tonight, which talks about, I thought I'd do something a little different. What are, what's on your grill? What's on your barbecue? Do you have steak? Do you have ribs? And maybe you like all these things, but just pick your favorite. Do you have hot dogs or sausages? <laughs> sausages? Or do you have hamburgers? We barbecued tonight. We call it barbecuing, but I know some places they call it grilling. Anyway, wherever you're from, doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Let me know what's on there. And maybe you're like, well, listen, I'm vegan or something like that. But I'm sure they have some tofu options that you can barbecue but it, that that resembles some of these things uh let me know what your favorite in the poll it'd be fun uh to know okay let's do this and uh 24 kitchen remodel tips for a successful renovation well that's a nice title because we all want a successful renovation i wish that maybe i should just do this maybe i should start a blog where it's you know if you want an an unsuccessful renovation. You should do these things. Guaranteed to be unsuccessful if you do these things. But this one is going to be successful. Let's jump into this right away. Um, I'm not going to read through all, all of the, the text and all that stuff. We'll talk about them. Instead, I'll give you my two cents. I don't know all the titles for all these. So this is one of 24. I know what this one is because I, I did look at this one. And I want to say that this is a really pretty picture. I like this kitchen. I like that color. I like the backsplash. Love the open shelves. Love the sconces. Mm-hmm. No, it is a nice, nice, nice kitchen. I don't know. You know how you all feel about open shelving. So but this is called, this first one is plan ahead. So if you want to have a successful kitchen renovation, you should plan ahead. Obviously, you want to plan ahead and planning is very important. I have a lot of content on this and I talk about this. We've talked about this before extensively. It's very important to plan and not hopefully not plan as you go when you're doing these types of things, though I know we all get into that from time to time. But the more you can plan ahead, the more successful you're going to be in getting the outcome that you want. So from your design to planning out the tarot and the installation and, and how that's all going to go, the better you're going to be. So plan ahead. Very good start to this article. Obviously, we want to plan ahead. And that's a really nice little kitchen. Okay, let's keep going. 
This next one is, now, before I reveal the title, have a quick look at the picture and see if we can figure out what it is. And at first glance, I would say, get rid of your doors, buy your dishes at the dollar store. I don't know. Let's see. Eliminate wasted steps. <laughs> well, that picture does nothing for that title. I don't know who wrote this. Um, eliminate wasted steps. Think about how and where you use your kitchen. I'm store breakfast foods and bowls near the breakfast table. Okay, which is the same as my dinner table and my lunch table. So I don't know what to do there. Keep wraps and containers in one handy spot near the work surface. So, okay. Uh, so this is goes back to planning. Plan ahead so that you can store things where they need to be stored, where it's the most accessible and usable. So pretty good tip. Eliminate wasted steps. This has maybe a little hint of the kitchen triangle idea of so you're not walking around everywhere. You want to locate things where they should be located. I did a video on this too a while back talking about just the different triangles that are within a kitchen and how there's not just one big master triangle, though maybe there is. There's also these other smaller little things, um, little triangles, little little you know, pathways that you take to do certain tasks in the kitchen and you want to keep those things uh, close together. So eliminate waste space. But all in all, I mean, this is a pretty funky looking nook in this kitchen. So very cool. Let's keep going. Number three. Um, I have no idea what this would be, but I like that range hood. I like that. That's a really cool, interesting look there. Got the open shelves again. Something to these open shelves, these new fan dangled things. What's this called? Um, build an accessible kitchen. <laughs> Sound advice. If you want to have a successful kitchen renovation, make sure that your kitchen is accessible. So that's sound advice. And I totally agree. You want to make sure that you can access stuff. The video I'm doing this coming week is talking about shallow storage. In fact, I went to Ikea and I was looking at some options that they have for shallow storage, um, not only in the kitchen section, but also in the other sections of their store. Because I think that shallow storage is probably the most accessible and most functional you can find. I know drawers are accessible. Um, but even sometimes pulling out a drawer, it, as, as easy as that is, can be a nuisance. I find shallow storage, if it's, you know, right at arm's reach, it's everything's right there. And you can store a lot in a shallow depth pantry or shallow depth base cabinets. So uh, this is very good advice, uh, in my opinion. Build an accessible kitchen. And that has to do with everything from clearances, probably, to walkways, where things are located, how things are located and how things are, are accessed. Um, you know, how, how are you doing your, your corners? How are you doing your drawers? All that kind of stuff. So build an accessible kitchen. And the interesting thing is that accessible for me might be different than accessible for you. And so there's no like one size fits all kitchen. In fact, functionality is not subjective or it's not objective. It's very subjective in the sense that your needs are different than my needs. And so your kitchen would naturally look different than mine in the way it functions. Although, I mean, some things would be probably similar in the way they would be laid out, but it's just not cookie cutter. Someone had asked me before about doing designs. Can you just like design five or six, you know, kitchens? And then those would be what you'd, what you'd show to people. And you can't do it that way because there's not five or six people. There's a billion of us or uh, 7 billion or however many there is. I have no idea. There's, there's more than just five of us. So you need to have just about that many kitchen options for people. So, you know, I've got a lot of work to do, but build an accessible kitchen. Great advice so far. All right. Good, good. And that has to do too with accessibility in terms of um, if you have any kind of, of disability, I don't know. I don't know if you're allowed to say that word anymore. I don't even know. I don't want to get canceled, but if you have some kind of thing where you need to have, if you're in a wheelchair or something like that, okay, um, you need to have it, your kitchen designed differently and accessible in a different way than if, if you don't. So that's something to consider as well. Okay, what's this next one? Man, sconces are showing up everywhere. More sconces. These look like a little robot, little droid that's in the Star Wars movie. In like the newest Star Wars movie or something? I don't know. They just do. 
I don't hate sconces. I like the backsplash uh, behind the range. Okay, what's the title of this one? Incorporate kitchen technology. Okay, it's a very nice little kitchen, nice little L-shaped layout. Not very big. Really nice color on that island, by the way. I like that. That's cool. A little mint. Mint? Is that mint? I guess it's mint. Mint color with some natural mm, wood of some type. I have no idea what kind of wood that is. So incorporate some kitchen technology into your space. Yes, uh, there's lots of ways that we can do this. I've talked about this before in the channel as well. And we've talked about it. Different ways to make your kitchen smart or just incorporate some smart technology, of course. Um, and there's lots of ways you can do this. They, they recommend about lighting and that's one way to do it. Smart lighting. And what's this from stalling? Oh, smart taps. You have, you can have voice activated taps and touch activated taps. And you know, if you've seen the reaction video I did with the, the, the faucet and stuff that, you know, you basically have to be a DJ to work it. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, that was kind of cool. So there's, I don't know how cool it is, but there's an interesting and innovative. So there's the, those kinds of things. And they have a smart trash can. Yeah, I've seen those before. Uh, anyway, there's lots of different things you can do in your kitchen to allow technology to help you out. Um, not just having, you know, a fridge that can play a video, though that's kind of handy as well, especially if you're trying to learn uh, maybe a new recipe and you want to put it up right on your fridge instead of having your iPad there. You can basically have it on your fridge door. You can have it in your microwave. I've seen them in dishwashers, which is a little awkward in my opinion to have to look down at your dishwasher to watch, to watch something on the door of the dishwasher, but they do have them out there and lots of other ideas as well. So that's, that's good advice. Incorporate technology. And we've been doing this now for years. And some people are a little bit against smart technology, but think about the way we've progressed with technology over the years and you know it's just it's inevitable that it's going to find its way into the kitchen and i say it's probably good to embrace it if it's helping you or if you just like it it's your kitchen so all right this next one number five design wide walkways i would say design wide enough walkways i'm not necessarily wider is better uh but narrower can be a problem so but wider can be a nuisance as well so i'd say the walkway space should be you know appropriate and within the ratio of the rest of your kitchen to to make it accessible and to make it so that you're not bumping into people and we talked about this before 42 inches is generally for a one person kitchen the distance that you should have between a countertop surface and another countertop surface so for instance in this kitchen there's quite a bit of space between that black countertop and the island. Maybe more space than would be needed, but in this kitchen it works, though you wouldn't want to go too much more. So design wide walkways, um, and I would just say design wide enough walkways. You don't want to be too cramped. And that, of course, that depends on if you have a two-person cooking kitchen where, you know, a lot of you are uh, maybe two of you in the home are, are cooking or, or it could be three and you know, it, there, it all depends on the family. So you want to have your kitchen design to, to fit the flow and function of that. I see somebody in the poll saying, uh, I didn't spe uh, about veggie burger. If you're a vegetarian, yeah, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan and you're, you're looking at this poll, pick the option that would, you know, they have a vegetarian or vegan option for that and, and vote on that one. Um, can only pick there's only four options i could put in there and so that's what i went with so yeah and so far uh steak is in the lead oh interesting hot dogs are coming in dismal fifth five percent all right so good i say it's barbecue season but we barbecue all year long even through the winter i'll shovel i, I shovel two paths one to the hot tub and one to the barbecue and I don't care how, how thick the snow is, a foot, two feet of snow, it doesn't matter. I'm shoveling my pathway to that barbecue. And, uh, and we barbecue all winter long. So, But definitely probably more in the summer where we're at. But maybe you live in an environment where you don't have to worry about that. All right, next one, number six. And we'll take a break, look at the uh, comments for a minute. This one is, ooh, look at that angled cabinet. Nasty. <laughs> plan kitchen clearances. 
Okay, well, kind of like the last one. Let's just read this one. When designing a kitchen, it's important to adhere to standard kitchen clearances for fridges, stoves, cooktops, sinks, and more. Always allow 15 inches of countertop on each side of a cooktop and refrigerator landing space is also important near the microwave. Create a 15 inch landing zone above, beside, or below your microwave. Yeah, exactly. In fact, next to a sink, it should be 18 on one side, 24 on the other. Uh, 15 is good by a fridge. I'd say next to your range, you want to have more than 15 inches, but at least that if you want to put something down uh, or just for pot handles to move and just to have stuff there because it's a working environment. So you want to be able to like get at stuff. So um, yeah, that's good. Plan your clearances. And uh, the, normally, normally this is not difficult to do unless you're dealing with maybe a space where it's very cramped and you have to choose between countertop and maybe storage and whatnot. And so that dilemma comes up. And the answer to that is what, what do you need the most? Um, you know, what's going to be the most important, but um, it's not always one or the other, or you, you can't have both. It's one or the other sometimes with my camera. And um, so this is an interesting kitchen. It looks like uh, it was painted. That's laminate countertop on there. So very cool. Um, yeah, plan your clearances. Make sure that you can you can put stuff down. And, and of course, again, we talked about this, and I talked about this before. You don't want to have a range with nothing beside it. You don't want to have a range that's against right against a wall if you can help it. Um, some maybe you're dealing with a kitchen you just can't help it it's the way it is the way it is you want to have a fridge where there's counter space either right next to it or on an island maybe right across a path a passway uh, stuff like that so that you uh, can can move around and put stuff where it needs to be put so you're not walking with something especially something hot for a long distance the fridge in my opinion that landing area is not as important like when i take out you know, my almond milk for my shake in the morning. It's not like, I got to put this down somewhere. It's like, where's the, where's the closest place? Like, it's just a thing of almond milk. Like, it's not that big a deal if there's no landing space next to it, in my opinion. Now, the the, the oven, on the other hand, yes. Okay, you got to put it down somewhere. I just get a kick out of some of these guidelines. You know, think about it. You take out your butter or something. It's like, yeah, I got to put this down. Where's the closest landing space? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, what the sun will do to one. Let's look at the comments. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. Of course, um, I was saying at the beginning here tonight, I should have my own jingle. Maybe I'll um, maybe I'll write something, <laughs> perform it on the next one, because why not? Uh, you know, something like I'm not even going to bother. Maybe next week I'll write a jingle and then we'll sing it. just to make it more of like a show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, good evening from Birmingham. We got Vermont, Indianapolis. Awesome. Florida. Oh, love Terry Joe. Caught the intro. Loved it. Thanks. <laughs> from Florida. Cool. I was going to wear my uh, surf style uh, tank top tonight, but I didn't want to wear a tank top on my live stream. So, <laughs> so we, we put that away, but um, Yeah. Got that one in clear water. Uh, hello, everyone. Oh, Carol can be on very long. They have a we have a planned power outage. Oh my goodness! Wow. At least you know it's coming. Nothing worse than an unplanned power outage. Ah, the oh the Fiesta Ware is beautiful. I'm I'm I'd rather have behind a cabin door. Okay, we're going back here. I'm way behind on the comments. My apologies, of course. But let's just catch up. Hey, Mavis here from North Carolina. Very cool. What's your opinion on murals wall murals in the kitchen is it too busy i don't know what's your opinion on wall murals in the kitchen i think to me it's not a big deal i i don't think it's too busy but it could be too busy for somebody so it's one of those things where it's i don't know if there's like a yes or no answer to that i think if it's a mural that i really like then I'm going to like it. And I'm going to like it in my kitchen. So yeah, um, there you go. I I'm, I'm cool with the murals overall. Helen's here from East Gippsland. East Gippsland? 
East Gippsland. I'm sorry. Australia, so thanks for being here again. You're late. Yes, well, you're not that late. You had a plumber. Oh, cool. Double dishwasher. Ooh, double dish drawers dishwasher. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> that sounds awesome, Helen. A double dish dishwasher. Oh, my goodness. A double dish drawers dishwasher. Wow. That's awesome. C congratulations. I like that. I've, I don't think I've seen that. I've seen a drawer dishwasher before, though. They look pretty cool. Uh, one of the first things on my rental list is landing spaces for my fridge. I don't have any now. Uh, yeah, and it is a P-I-T-A. I'm horrible with acronyms, so I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> so my, my apologies. Yeah, I mean, there should be landing area by your fridge. I just sometimes wonder how important it really is uh, sometimes. Anyway. Hey, hey, hi from London. Cool. London, England or London, Ontario? Oh, <laughs> Carol, you're a trooper. You're on your phone. How's that power out going? I hope it's not too long. Oh, <laughs> okay. Ah, I get it. Okay. Well, Carol can, can now Carol knows what that means because she's on her phone watching. Awesome. All right, let's jump back into this and um, let me sip some coffee. Oh, Mavis, you can still answer. Just pick a vegan option. You know, like maybe there's, I'm sure they have vegan hamburgers. Maybe. I don't know. I know I've had, I'm sure there's vegan hot dogs. Put those in. I don't know. Maybe they're not good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Let's jump back in. Uh, where, where where are we? Here we go. All right. We got the kitchen clearances. Let's keep going. Here we go again. Lots more green happening there. More sconces on the wall. I'm I'm missing something, I guess. I guess this sconce thing really is trendy. There's a little mural in that one, little picture. I'd call it a mural. All right, consider a closed kitchen layout. What? Are you kidding me? Not ready to knock down walls as more and more families desire private spaces within their homes because we're so tired of each other from COVID. <laughs> closed kitchens are now winning out over the open concept floor plans that have been popular for years. You know, I, 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 this is a great article. You just can't say that. <laughs> you, you, you don't know that. You don't know that. You don't know that they're winning out. You have no evidence for this at all. You have no data. I hear what you're saying, though. Cooking, eating, and even working in the kitchen are seen as ideally separate and apart from the home's entertainment rooms. Consider a pass-through window for space that is still bright and airy. Well, yes. Uh, let me know. In the comments, what do you think about, about closed-in kitchens? It's one of those things. It has been, you know, mentioned a lot because open concept has been so popular from so, for so long. And it's basically just the go-to when you're, when you're renovating a kitchen, especially, or even in a new build, um, that you would knock out walls and just make the kitchen... Uh, an open concept, but uh, I do hear this more and more that people are wanting to have a more closed in space, but I just don't know if it's like going to be the trend that, that continues to carry on. What do you think about it in yours? I know that in mine, I, I have a fully open concept kitchen, living room, dining room, the whole thing is open and we love it and it works for us. And my parents would have a closed kitchen, though it's, you know, I mean, there's basically two doorways in, well, more than two doorways, but it's it's not open to the rest of the home, and that works for them, and, and that works for that home, and um, my in-laws, they have a closed kitchen with a dine, eat-in, you know, dining room, so there's, there's lots of different ways to do it, and uh, I don't know if it's necessarily one's better than the other, but uh, I can see the benefit of both, really. Um, 
okay, real quick, back to this. Yes, they have vegan hamburgers. Awesome. And Ray Hana is in UK. Cool. Awesome. Well, it's a, thanks for being here because it's late in the UK. Is Michael here? Michael from Kitchen, Kitchen Cider? Is he on? He's not on tonight. All right. <laughs> we got this the new acronym. <laughs> the comment of the night. All right. Yeah, and here's one of the reasons Mavis is saying I prefer closed in space. I don't want everyone seeing all my dirty dishes. So, and that is one of the reasons is that you can just kind of leave everything, especially if you have company or if you're quite social, you like to have people over and you can, you know, do the whole kitchen thing and then go entertain in another room and not have to worry about that mess right away. Um, so people like that option. So good point on that one. Yeah, seeing massive American kitchens is overwhelming. You know what? Like in North America, like kitchens are very large. Homes are just very large, I, I find in general. Yeah. If you're not used to that, I can understand that. Like how much how much kitchen do you really need, right? I designed some big kitchens. All right. So, so, so consider a closed layout. That might be a kitchen tip that might be worth it for you. Let's look at this one. Oh, this has some problems. This this kitchen has some problems for me. Okay, anyway. Consider countertop height. Consider countertop height. Oh, okay. Those who cook frequently require more space, ideally between the range and the sink, than those who cook infrequently or who prepare meals. All right, so consider countertop height. Well, this only really applies to that island because otherwise your countertop height is normally going to be pretty much standard. Though you can lower sections of countertops depending on your height if you need it to be customized. That can be done for you. Most places who do custom cabinets could lower or you know, high, 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 higher, lower or higher, <laughs> lower or raise uh, countertops so that you can use it properly. I don't English very good today um but in this case in this picture in particular that island with the raised lunch counter not my favorite use of of a raise i don't like raised lunch counters i know there's a range there and so for that reason it's probably okay because it's a safety a little bit more of a safety uh, feature but um that fridge placement is is bonkers to me however um Normally, I wouldn't want to use, normally I don't like uh, raised lunch counters because uh, I just like the look. I mean, just me personally, I like the look of one big island countertop. And when you're sitting there actually eating on that lunch counter, like, you know, you know, when you're on a kitchen table, you can just spread stuff out. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to have this much space that your plate and your cup and your thing, your fork, <laughs> so it's not a thing. You, all your stuff has to be within this just little distance. Um, so anyway, I would say other than that, yeah, but consider your countertop height. I guess so. Uh, normally that's going to be done for you. But if you're going to do a two-tier island, maybe reconsider that. Uh, most times it might not be the best thing. So if you like it, you like it. This is a pretty little kitchen. Wow. I like that. Open shelves. No sconces in this one. Some window seating. All right. What's the title on this? What's the tip? Use light colors in a small kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Well, it makes sense. You want to use reflective colors. Meanwhile, they have black base cabinets. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Smaller spaces, the more reflective you have, more windows, the more light, the better. So good tip. You want to be nice and bright unless you want it dark. And that's your prerogative. It's a cool little floor they got going there. I like that. Ooh, that's a fancy hood. Very fancy. Nice, nice oven range. Wolf, okay. Arrange the range. Ooh, catchy. 
Place a shelf beside or behind the range to keep cooking oils, utensils, and spices handy. Place X S hooks on the side of the range or the range hood to hang frequently used pots and pans. For extra pop, use metal with warm tones like brass or copper. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? I'm not a huge fan of hanging things like that. Personally, for me, I just think it looks kind of whatever. And hanging pots on my on my range hood, I don't with an S hook. I'm not sure how I'm going to mount that, but yeah. I mean, if you if you like this sort of thing, cool. Um, you can get that. You can get these at IKEA. You can get them different places. Home Depot has those types of things. Lowe's probably all those types of places. So or or, or even other retailers that you, you go to. Um, yeah, a shelf behind the range. I'm not so sure about just because I think it'd be so super greasy and so super dirty that it wouldn't be that, that cool. So I don't know about that one. Maybe not. What's this one? More open shelving. I see a theme here, with the open shelving and the green. It's almost like it's a trend or something like that. I don't know. Excuse me while I drink my coffee. What's this one? Try bold colors. Okay. Um, mm, not super bold, those that, that green. It's a nice green, though. I like it. <clears throat> I've seen worse. My stance on green must be changing because I don't despise any of these. <laughs> Barbara, are you there? <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, that's good. I like it. Bold colors. I'm not against bold colors. It's not my personal favorite thing to do. What I like to do, what I've done in the past, is instead of bold colors, I like to just take, especially, or even if they don't have um, handles, if they have knobs, I would just, I like to, uh, you can get these knobs that are flowers. They just look like a ceramic hand painted flower, like a daisy or something like that. And I do the whole kitchen with whatever type of handle, but I'd put one of those little flowers somewhere as a little like surprise just to brighten your day or maybe tick you off. I'm not sure. But uh, bold colors are another way to do that. And uh, I like just a white kitchen and I'm not into super bold colors personally. You know, I don't wear bold colors normally uh, except for my socks. Maybe I'll wear like bright pink socks. Um, but otherwise I like, you know, so, uh, so in my kitchen, I like, I like just like basically white, which is as bold as they come really white. Uh, but yeah, if you like bold colors, go for it. That's one way you can, uh, you can do that. I don't know if that's a, t a kitchen design tip. Oh, here we go. A microwave. Jackie, I don't know. Yeah. Jackie's here. Um, Jackie, I got your email with uh, that article. I didn't, or that, I think it was a video. I didn't read it yet, but I, or look at it, but I seen, uh, the title about uh, self-starting microwave. Um, so thank you for sending me that. I will definitely be checking that out. But find the right height for the microwave. Oh, here we go. Now we're talking. This is really important. Again, something that is not just, you know, the right answer for every kitchen or for every person it has to do with a lot of things, depending on how you use the microwave, how often you use it, who's using it, and, um, and, and the height that's comfortable for you is really important. If kids are using it, uh, where should it be placed? If, you know, there's, there's lots of different things there. And of course we have, um, in this one's in an island, mine, mine in my kitchen's an island. Of course, we all know you can get a over the range, you can get them in a pantry, you can put them in a wall cabinet, built in wall cabinet. Um, so there's lots of, of places where that can go. And you should definitely consider the best place for you um, and the right height. Yeah, they're saying kids here, adults, 15 inches above counter level is good for microwave height. Well, it's a good microwave height if that works for you. So consider that. Make sure it's it's um, it's where it's convenient for you. Now, ours has, it's a drop-down door. And so then it, you know, and it's, and it's low because it's in the island. We don't use it a whole lot. So, you know, it doesn't even matter. But you can, you know, if you had to pull it out, you can put stuff 
right on the door. And that comes in handy too if it's in a wall mounted uh, unit. Of course, that wouldn't work if it was like above your range, obviously, because you have a door coming down in your face. So in that particular case, no, you don't want that. So find the right height for your microwave. Yeah, very good. Next we have, here's some shallow depth uh, storage before I look at the, at the title of this one. See how everything is so accessible? I love it. I love that it's all just right there. You don't need to pull anything out because it's all there for you. And you can store quite a bit of stuff in there. Right, right, right. Okay. Plan kitchen cabinet clearance. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess if doors are opening, you want to think about that. Where drawers are opening against doors or out from corners, you want to think about that. And you want to make sure that you have just clearance for all that stuff. Pretty obvious, but it does get overlooked. And it can get easily overlooked, even in a new kitchen reno, even in a new you know, new build or whatever. Uh, you can easily overlook some of these clearances and end up with a kitchen where you just didn't think about it and something will, doesn't open because something else is in the way. And it can come down to just the handles that you're using, the knobs or the handles. How, how far they stick out. I mean, they're pretty standard, most handles, but it is something to consider that, you know, if, if a, a drawer can't open because of there's a handle in the way, or maybe a dishwasher's in the way or whatnot, um, that's something to, to or, or some other appliance, something to consider. So make sure you have good clearances. This is where, you know, sitting down, going through that process of the design and the planning is really important. Um, and normally your designer, if you're working with one, would be considering these things as well so that you uh, you cover all those bases. So you want to make sure that, yeah, the doors aren't opening into other doors or stuff isn't happening. This comes in really important, actually, before we go on, yeah, when we're talking about um, fridge fridges and where they're located, especially if they're located against a wall. And a lot of people don't consider that a fridge door needs you know, some space, some degrees of opening. And so that's important to, to consider as well when you're, uh, when you're planning those things out. All right. So plan your clearances. Let's keep going. And then we'll jump in a couple more. We'll jump into the comments and we'll chat for a bit more and we'll keep going with these. These are kind of good. Let's check our poll real quickly. Steak is still on the menu. Hmm. We're having steak tonight. <laughs> and my coffee is getting cold. Love it. All right, what's this? This is a cute little nook. Cute, cute little nook. <laughs> oh, at an office nook. <laughs> what is a nook? All right, utilize an empty corner at a partition or accommodate an office nook in your kitchen. Families in need of extra workspace can incorporate both dinner and homework in the same room. And my phone's ringing, but I'm not going to answer it. Um, whether tucked away in a corner or in the middle of your countertop, a kitchen office should include comfy seating, shelving, and storage. You know, I, I don't know how I feel about the office nook. I, I don't... <sighs> Are you really going to be doing a whole lot of work there? I know with this particular picture, you know, you you write a few notes down. You got your little calendar there and your little to-do list. But I highly doubt this is an office space for anybody. So I'm not totally convinced that you're going to be using that as an office space. And I highly doubt any kid's going to be doing homework there. Um, but maybe, and maybe I think if it's uh, big enough, I mean, this works for this kitchen. It looks cute. It looks nice. It's fine. But is it necessary? I don't know. That's where it comes down to your individual needs and what you need and what you like. Yeah. And here we go. Here's a hoop static is saying clutter zone. This picture has been curated for your viewing pleasure. But in real life, it looks like my countertop upstairs, which is like, <laughs> so be careful with that. I just don't know. The old kitchen office is a thing of the past. Like really in the 80s and 90s, that was really popular. You had your telephone in your telephone book. And you had all of your 
your your notes of like your list of numbers, your personal numbers written down on a on a piece of paper, a tape to the back of a door. You had these things, and that's where it all happened. But now you don't really have that, and so these kind of things can be a little bit maybe not as useful, unless you are inclined to do so. So to each his own. We'll leave it at that. Let's go to the next one. And then we'll jump into the comments. Ooh, cool kettle. I bet this has to do with pot fillers. Any guesses? <laughs> I had a pot filler. Listen, I promise you, I did not look at these beforehand. Only the very first one. So that was a complete guess. Good for me. The pot filler gave it away. Add a pot filler. Tired of lugging water-filled pots from the sink to the cooktop? No, I'm not, actually. I'm not tired of that at all, because I never do it. A swing-out tab, also called a pot filler, installed near the cooktops, fills pots near where you heat them. Or you can install an extra-long hose attachment on the main faucet to fill pots on the cooktop. Obviously, that's a joke, but it's an option if you want to try that. You can get hose attachments for an indoor faucet, by the way. So you could actually hook a garden hose right to your faucet. Away you go. No need for that extra pot filler. Pot fillers. Um, I'm here nor there. I've never had one. So I can't comment on them in any educated manner other than my what I think they'd be like. And... I think it could be a recipe for disaster. It's another faucet that can leak um, if the if the cartridge goes bad or the O-rings or whatever is involved in in that in that mechanism. So it's just another another possibility for that to go wrong. There's it's another shutoff valve somewhere that you have to think about because there'd have to be a shutoff valve to that. And where is that located? I'm not sure. Is it built into the into the thing itself? Maybe. Maybe not. Um, and you, you don't have to lug water to your sink, but you're probably going to have to lug hot water, which is probably worse, back to your sink. So are you really getting the benefit? However, they look cool. There's water right there. Maybe, maybe it's a great idea. I don't know. What do you think of that? You know? Uh, here we go. Terry Joe, pot fillers. The only one that makes sense to me is at a coffee station. Right. And so why wouldn't you just have a hot water tap or just a sink instead of this, right? Because because to me, anywhere there's water, there should be a drain. That's my only thing. If there's water, there should be a drain. That water has to go somewhere. Your kid leaves that thing on or or whatever. Something happens. At least in your sink, it can drain for a little while until something clogs and it overflows, but at least you have some time there with this. It's just like, it's just instant water and it could be everywhere. I don't know. I, I have an, I have a feeling that this would cause problems though. It looks like it might be useful. I don't just don't know. How about this? My next home, I'll get a pot filler and then I'll do a video about it. Okay. Promise. I like that floor. That is cool. I like it. I'm going to, I'm, I know I've been getting asked about doing a, a video about flooring in kitchens. I'm a little bit hesitant because I'm not a flooring specialist. I mean, I'm not really, I mean, I, I guess I'm not a kitchen specialist either. <laughs> I just know what I know, but <laughs> I don't, wouldn't dare call myself a specialist. Um, but flooring, I know less about, uh, so I, I just want to be careful. I don't want to give the wrong information, though. I probably give the wrong information about kitchens all the time. Um, so <laughs> just the way it goes. So I'll think about the flooring one. I do have some opinions, but that would be as about as far as it goes. All right. Installation. I can, I could talk about installation of flooring in a kitchen, um, for sure. And some materials. So it might come up sooner than later. Anyway, this is a really nice kitchen. I like that island actually. And I like 
I like that that uh, I like that floor a lot. Okay, interesting. I like it. What's this? Break up cabinetry blocks. Avoid boring, heavy blocks of doors and drawers by adding interesting details. I like that. Try glass doors, open shelves, display favorite crockery or glassware. Do we really use the word crockery? I don't know. I don't. Do you? Get the crockery. <laughs> Get the glassware and the crockery, dear. I'm going to start cooking. <laughs> if you do, I apologize. Even food storage can be out in the open with glass pantry doors that showcase organized labeled food choices. Yeah, right. Anyway, this is nice, and I agree. It's nice to break up the look of your kitchen um, with some glass. And if you like open shelves, then that's an option as well. So that it's not uh, boring, unless it's... It's not boring to you. Maybe you don't mind that and it's not boring. So, but if you do want a break of cabinet doors and drawers, this is one way to do it. They have the nice uh, toe kick feature uh, in this one, which I like. And that you can say, well, that's a, a, that can be a dust collector, but there'd be a toe kick in behind that so that you can actually clean that. And it doesn't, uh, you know, if you drop something, you can't slide all the way underneath. Uh, there would be a toe kick there, most likely. At least anytime I've done that, that's how I've done it. All right, so break up cabinetry blocks. Let's jump over to the comments. I hope you're having uh, an okay time so far. Um, oh, there goes my camera, which is, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll fix that someday. <sighs> Here we go. Pot fillers are not a thing in Australia. Okay. They're like, they're at least less of a thing where I'm at. But I don't, I can't say for sure that in Canada they're not a thing. But yeah, probably less. I think it depends on where you live. Okay. Oh, here we go. This makes sense. Professional kitchens will have one, but that's because they're using a lot of water. Yeah, I can see it if you need that. Like if you need that because it's just more, it, it streamlines the whole process then definitely that makes sense. But in a normal residential kitchen, how important is that? It's kind of one of those things where it's, I kind of just want it. I just want one, okay? Stop it with, I don't have to carry water from the sink anymore. Like, no, you just you just want a pot filler. Just admit it. It's fine. It's fine if you just want one. It's cool. It's no big deal. Just get a pot filler. I think that's the best reason. If you want one, that, then go ahead and get one. I just think it's funny that we come up with these like reasons why here's why we need one. But in a professional kitchen, yes, that does make perfect sense. Okay. Oh, so uh, Helen's saying that Australian reg regulations with gas fitting, electrical sockets, etc., and their proximity to water are incredibly stringent. Oh, interesting. I know here, at least in, well, probably in all, mostly all nor North America, um, you know, there's some, there's obviously building code regulations that determine the type of socket and uh, that you need the type of outlet, you know, a, a ground fault interrupter and all that other kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, I would say we'd have the same regulations, probably pretty stringent as well. I don't, I don't know how they would apply it to, to pot fillers, to be honest. I'm not sure. Okay, let's go with this. What's this? Uh, we just built our island peninsula and made it. It can't be an island and a peninsula. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> made it more like a table. I know what you're saying. I'm just joking. Um, so it has a shelf, but open below. Cool. It really helps to feel lighter and more open. Yeah, I like that shelf below thing. That's really cool. Really nice. Won't end up kicking the dishes. Oh, won't you end up kicking the dishes? With a shelf? I think that's what you're saying. Maybe. I'm not sure. But if, you're, if there's dishes there, they're probably going to get kicked, I would say for sure. What happens if your pot filler has a leak? Yeah, and you have a gas range. You're going to have a wet gas range. That's an issue. And you're going to have a, you know some flooring issues after that. I can't see that being good. So that, that's a good call. I'm not sure. I would like one for the dog bowl. Yeah, maybe you just don't need to have one over your range. You could put them in different places. One of the one of the best things, I don't know if it'll come up on this on this article yet, or we're getting close to the end of it, 
but those those hot water taps i mean they're not a new thing but uh, they're they're becoming more popular again i mean my grandmother had one way back and uh old school one with a had a black turning like a black handle on it black knob and uh just old school just you know fill up her tea bam and um but i, I think those would be pretty handy I, I would i'd be interested in one of those for sure and i i know that you can get ones that have carbonated water uh, michael and i talked about this before you can get like filtered water carbonated water and hot water um i think that'd be cool i think it'd be cool if coffee could come out of one of those as well i'm sure that's a thing too actually i just don't know but i'm sure but yeah awesome okay yeah kicking the plates you definitely would be kicking the plates i, I think uh in that case all right so let's keep going here um oh it doesn't have an open shelf just like a table oh open like a table cool 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 what happens? Oh, okay, we got that. All right, so let's keep going on this article. If I miss your comment uh, for some strange reason, well, it's not strange, it's because I miss it. Uh, my apologies, because um, we're looking through these and I don't see all the, the comments in the chat that comes through. So, uh, oh, Rahana, thanks so much for being on. Good night. I know it's late, so have a great sleep if that's what your plan is. And um, thanks for being on. You can get a Keurig fridge. Hmm? Oh, the Keurig fridge. I've not, I don't, I don't, I've never heard of the Keurig fridge. Sounds interesting. I just have an old school percolator. I percolate my coffee and we love it. Anyway, that's how we do it. That's how we do it here. <laughs> Let's keep going with this article. Um, hey, you know, it, uh, and before we get too far here, let me just interrupt myself. In the description of the video, I have, if you're interested in joining a mailing list, which some people are and some people aren't, um, you can do that. There's a link in the description. I send out a weekly email on Friday with very short kitchen-related tips, tri tips, tricks, and other types of things like that, stuff that just comes to my mind. So uh, if you're interested in that type of thing, you can do that. Also, if you need to, uh, if you need help with measuring your kitchen, my download, my guide, my downloadable guide, uh, my downloadable guide is below as well. But it also opts you into my mailing list, so just be aware of that. Not, and you can unsubscribe, of course. So, just so you are aware, that's in the description. Cool. Let's keep going. All right, so we're going to break up the cabinetry blocks. Let's keep going to the next one. <sighs> okay, sorry. Let me just jump back to the comments here for a second. <laughs> Where crockery is a crockery. Yes. Where is your crockery store, Jackie? I would like to know. I love the look of that cafe stove. Okay. What is a Keurig fridge? What is a Keurig fridge? We're going to have to find that out. I'll Google it in a minute if we don't know. If we don't get the answer. All right, here's the next one. Find a focal point. <clears throat> that tile is a lot on the eyes, isn't it? More open shelving. I know. Oh, I don't like that sink placement. Oh, a little bit... I don't know if I like where that is. That, that could be changed. Not a super fan of that. Anyway. <laughs> Bluebell, I have crockery. Uh, it's cool if you have crockery. I just have no idea what it is. What is crockery? Is it like ceramic? I just don't know what it is. I just, I guess I've never used the word crockery before. Anyway, I won't harp on that. Find a focal point. Splashy tile, fancy floors, sizable range hoods, sizable range hoods, uh, bright, bright kitchen cabinets, and busy countertop patterns can be overwhelming. Yes, they can. Pick one focal point in your kitchen design and complement the area with a few quieter, eye-pleasing details. Keep the remaining surfaces simple. That's solid advice. 
I don't know if I'd go with that seizure inducing backsplash though for my focal point. I'm sorry, but that's a good idea. Find a focal point. Okay, let's move on. Number 18 out of 24. Oh, look at that. Oh, workstation sync. Oh, two taps. Look how close together they are. Mm. Wow. Okay, what is it? Cut the cleaning time. <laughs> Add a faucet. Cut the cleaning time. Notice sconces, they're everywhere. Everywhere you look. <sighs> I said I didn't like them, but I'm starting to like them more and more. I might put some sconces in the next renovation. All right. If I build a new home, we're going to have sconces. And we're going to have uh, one of those tappy things. What are they called? Pot filler. <laughs> Cut the cleaning time. Careful design decisions making clean. Careful design decisions make cleaning easy. Maybe. Glass refrigerator shelves catch spills that wire shelves let through okay right yes flush set or undermount sinks don't have crumb catching rim to worry about no that's true but depends on the reveal underneath that could be a nightmare too matte finishes don't show dirt as much as glossy ones do always consider the cleaning implications of your kitchen remodel interesting that's cool um consider the cleaning implications of your kitchen that's important because you got to clean it so your surfaces should be easy to clean. And um, yeah, cut the cleaning time. Um, what do you think? I don't know. Okay, so the sink thing, yes, I get that. Uh, the rim on the sink can be a problem, though, like I said, undermount can be a pro can be problematic too, though less problematic. I, that I, This is where a Corian sink, where, which is all just one piece, would take away all of that pain. So... Um, you know, maybe that's a, a thing to consider. Uh, matte finishes don't show as much dirt as glossy ones. I don't know about that. I'd say the type of door that you have, whether it's a five-piece wooden door that's painted that has grooves in it that's going to collect dirt, as opposed to a one-piece vinyl-wrapped or polyester-wrapped door that doesn't have any of those grooves and crevices that is easy to wipe off, easy to clean, so I don't know if it's necessarily a matte finish that's an issue because honestly, probably a glossy finish might be actually easier to clean and depending on what the finish is. So again, if it's a painted finish, uh, you want to be careful with any painted finish. But if, if it's a polyester or a high gloss vinyl finish or thermal foil type of thing, uh, very easy to clean. In fact, the easiest to clean because it's you don't have to worry about water ruining your doors or anything like that. So... Yes, consider cleaning, but not at the expense of everything else. This comes down to your countertops as well. Like if you're putting in countertops, what's the easiest countertop to clean? I don't know. Maybe there, maybe it's it's maybe there's not much of a difference in between. I'd say the only consideration I have is that uh, if you have laminate and you have seams, you got to be careful around those seams. Um, so that's something to be uh, to be to think about otherwise i mean all the surfaces are pretty much on par cleaning wise whether you have corian or any type of stone really i mean uh, what's the popular one i can't think of quartz thank you for reminding me all of those things um very they clean easily so but but should be considered i guess if you're going with a textured laminate you know, I'm talking about laminate because it's still very popular and most people actually buy laminate over all the other surfaces. So if you're going with a laminate, you can you can get ones that are or are more glossy, that are, are easier to clean. Something that's more textured and pitted can be an issue. In fact, the one I have is called Calcutta Marble. So it looks like Calcutta Marble. It's just a Formica color, but it has these little indents in it just to give it some 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 texture and some depth. The problem with those little indents is that they can actually get dirty. And I have to actually take a scrubbing brush and like, like wash them. Like it doesn't just wipe up. You have to actually like scrub them with a brush to, to get that, to get like, to make sure dirt doesn't get in there. And so, you know, I never considered that. I never thought, I never really thought about it actually. But now I, now I know, now I can, now I have, I'm educated. 
All right. Let's jump over again to the comments because I see some comments coming through. I want to hit them up. So let's just jump back up a little bit. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, meringue kitchen. Oh, it is a meringue kitchen. Very hard on the eyes, meringue kitchen with a bad sink placement. <laughs> Pot fillers and double taps. I'll take it. I'll take the double taps, a pot filler, and a hot water tap. Thank you very much. Overkill with the faucets, maybe. I am being brainwashed. Thank you very much. Sink in the corner. Sort of screws with the corner cabinet. It sure does, which isn't an issue, because there shouldn't be a corner cabinet at all in any kitchen. But too close to the corner, in my opinion. You want a little bit of room next to you, so you're just not bumping into it. Hey, Amy. We are updating our golden oak kitchen beauty to creamy white cabinets. And we just chose polished Taj Mahal quartzite counterups. Wow. Cool. So you're painting them. Um, I'm assuming is that what you're doing. You're painting them or you're getting new cabinets. Either way. Great. Congratulations. Cause it sounds amazing. Taj Mahal quartzite. I'm not quite sure what that looks like, but the fact that it's quartzite is a thumbs up from me. So awesome. Thanks for, for, uh, for letting me know that. That's cool. My husband always teasing me. I would say I hate to clean that. I hope he's cleaning. Matte finishes on faucets is easier to clean. Interesting. I didn't really didn't know that, but yeah. We have matte finishes on our faucets, and that they are easier to clean. Br br brushed, no finish, no stains. Yeah, okay. Something I never actually really thought about it. Jackie's not into the sconces either. Bathrooms and halls, yes. Yeah. But they're coming up a lot in kitchens, so we just got to we gotta get used to it. They're going to show up everywhere. Hey, Barb's is... Oh, almost blocked you by accident. Bring up your comment, Barb's. I'm sorry. Late to the party, and you almost got blocked. But uh, glad you're here. Thanks so much. Helen, I had a... Filtered sparkling water, cold water, ambient water system installed. One tap. I, oh, my goodness. All right. I'm, Amy and I are booking a flight, and we're coming to visit you, Helen. We're coming to visit you. You got to show us all these cool things. I'd all, I always want to go to Australia. You never know. Someday. Just about to remove wall for open plan and ordered smart down lights from, oh, wooden, 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 oh, <laughs> I'm having a rough day. I got so much sun today. It was like 30 degrees here uh, from wooden to white. Beautiful. Excuse me. I thought you were trying to say like that this was a brand name or something. I should just change hats right now put my Kitchen King crown back on. I got a hat on tonight because not because I want to wear a hat, but because I got like just pool hair. So Awesome that you're going to remove a wall. I still love the open concept. I love opening up walls. So one of my favorite things to do, one of my favorite things that I have done when, whenever we've done renovation is just knock out walls. Love, love, love it. So awesome. Sounds great. Hot water taps in older homes. You may want to be careful since they could lead to, oh, it could be lead in the pipes. Yeah. Or I guess I guess maybe any taps, or is it just hot water taps? Definitely don't want that to happen. Oh, cool, Mavis. You're donating your old cabins to Habitat for Humanity. So they're doing the reno. Oh, that's awesome. So they're doing the demo, and you're... Uh, what a cool trade-off. Awesome. I like that. That sounds really cool. That would make a great video. Showing that whole process. Oh, yeah, lead in the pipes. We don't want that. Oh, okay. So there's a oh, GE Cafe series has a fridge with a Keurig dispenser. Oh, neat. So it like fills the water for your coffee maker, basically. That's cool. I like that idea. So is it like a water dispenser built into the fridge door with Keurig? That, that sounds... I have to look that up. I'm going to look it up in a minute once we go through here, if we have time. We're getting, oh, it's getting late. Let's keep going, though. We are having, 
cabins professionally painted. That is cool. Good plan that they're being professionally painted. That's the best way to do it if you're going to do that. Let's keep going on this article. We're almost done. Almost. Okay, where are we at? 19 of 24. All right. You need a string cabinet. Is that what this is? No, incorporate sustainable kitchen ideas. Ah, okay. Sustainability is especially important in the kitchen. Buy long-lasting cookware or crockery. Use energy-efficient appliances and invest in recycling and compost bins that can be stored out of sight. Yes, yes, and yes. One kitchen cabinet can be dedicated to storing reusable containers, bags, and paper. Also consider eco-friendly paints and place floor mats. No, I'm not for the floor mats. That's a tripping hazard. We've talked about that. But uh, make them out of recycled plastics uh, if you can. Okay, so yeah, consider sustainable kitchen ideas. A lot of companies out there are building cabinetry from reclaimed wood and reclaimed plastics and all that kind of thing. Uh, even Ikea has a particular, one of their doors is made completely from reclaimed materials and plastics and woods and stuff like that. I think it's plastics. But it's a, it's a step in the right direction because sometimes people will say to me, like, you know, because I, I do Ikea videos, they'd be like, well, why are you like promoting them? They're bad for the environment. But Let's just be fair. They actually, and I don't have any, I have no ties to Ikea to get nothing from them. So this is just me saying this, but they do have a part of their business that is investing and looking into making things that are more sustainable. So as are many companies. And uh, so this is a really good tip. Um, I think it's important that we do look after uh, the earth that we've been given. So really cool. So our kitchens, why not? Here we go. Add some, some USB ports maybe or you need a place for your colored pencils that was one of the other install kitchen outlets okay cool uh, install multiple outlets along the backsplash in the island so you'll have electricity wherever you need it yeah um yeah well and of course oh and ground fault interrupters near water sources definitely with so many high-tech appliances yeah nowadays plan for multiple um here's the thing you can also get the integrated ones that go into your countertop i think we've seen that before where you can just put your phone on top of your countertop and it charges it there's a you know there's some tech that goes underneath that it's not just you know magic obviously but you know it's some tech that is involved but you can purchase that and get inset into the underside of your of your um countertop and so you can have a place to to charge your phone it just looks like there's nothing there, but it actually charges your phone. And of course, these things are run in the mill. They, they've been around for a long time now, but you definitely uh, you definitely should have some, some charging stations. And in your island, that's going to be up to code. Most places that I know of, at least in the North America, need to have um, an, uh, an outlet in an island. So always uh, that's always good. And of course, if you're doing the renovation and you're doing it with a permit, then those things would have to be checked by an inspector. But if you're not doing it with a permit, with a permit, make sure that you at least cover the bases of what should be done and probably for insurance purposes as well. All right, let's do this. Keep going. We're almost there. And then we'll jump back to the comments and then we'll close out the show. Uh, oh, those knives have been sharpened. That is a nice knife drawer. Problem is, I mean, I guess if you have really good knives, are those good knives? I have no idea how to tell. Be sharp when storing knives. When planning kitchen remodel, create a designated spot for knives. Yeah, this is makes it easy to spot the, the right knife for the job and keep dangerous items out of children's reach. A knife drawer such as this one has slots. Yeah, that's cool. That's a great idea, actually. Um, and that looks like concrete countertop which is very cool anyway back to the knives interesting idea we just have like a knife block where the knives go we've seen some other pictures where they have them on the magnetic strips which is an, another idea and i know chefs like that everything's really accessible and i've seen some videos uh with professional chefs in their own personal kitchens and they have those strips on the on the wall or wherever where you can just grab the knife that you want and i think that might be a good idea if, if that's what you like to do. But if you want your knives hidden, this is a great way to do it. Consider your knives. What's this one? Consider floor, oh, kitchen flooring options. Oh, well, obviously we're gonna consider that, right? More open shelves. Man, a lot of open shelves. I like the shallow storage in this one. This is cool, curated, but there's storage there. Really, really nice, nice little kitchen. 
get creative when it comes to kitchen floors. Try texture tiles, bamboo. Okay, well, there's so many flooring options out there. You can get a lot of reclaimed material. What's the best one? I really don't know. My personal choice right now is hardwood. But uh, some people, you know, like engineered floors or they like, you know, the, the laminate plastic ones or linoleum or whatever, you know, tile, bamboo, there's all kinds. And I'm, I don't want to comment because I don't really know what is the best. Um, but yeah, consider the right flooring. So do a little bit of uh, research before you buy your flooring. We'll leave it at that. Number 23, I like the beam. I still like this country style look. I really do like it, actually. I think it looks nice. A lot of windows, nice and bright. More open shelves, more sconces. Mm, sconces are winning the day. Don't forget kitchen lighting. Oh, and since we're talking about sconces, lighting can sometimes be an afterthought and it should be at the top of the design consideration. Yeah, I, I agree it should be considered for sure. Consider lighting. And there's lots of different lighting options that are available out there from pendants to sconces to smart LEDs to pot lights to tokic lights to ambient lights above your cabinets and under overhangs and in your drawers and underneath ridges of all sorts. So lots of ways to light your kitchen. You can get very creative and um, definitely something worth Googling and looking at images to get some inspiration on um, when you're going to go do that. All right, the last one, and then we'll, uh, we'll chat for a bit is this oh another another bad sink layout but i mean you know i'm going to give this one a pass because this is a very small kitchen so you got to do something mix and match finishes gone are the days of cold all white kitchens no no one said that not gone are the days of cold why are they cold by the way i don't like whoever's writing this i'm sorry well, i'm going to call you we have to have a chat Today's kitchen designs are more in tune with nature. Oh, sorry for my white kitchen. With eco-friendly organic materials, especially popular, incorporate wood, bamboo, linen, marble, and other natural materials. Mix and match textures to create a layered look that adds warmth, depth, and style. Yes. Um, all right, I like it, whatever. Uh, it's all good. So there you go. 24 tips um, for your next kitchen renovation. And I'll um, maybe I'll add a link to that article. Uh, they're, they're pretty good. I like most of those. I think there's lots you can get from looking at that stuff just to consider. You know, uh, it's important to cover all the bases. And I find that even for me, I like looking at some of these articles because it, it brings about ideas or maybe things that you haven't thought of or never thought to think of um, in your kitchen design. So it's always good to look at some of those things and take all of those articles with a grain of salt overall because. Most times they're written, um, you know, just by by just non-kitchen professionals. We'll put it that way. Not all of them, but sometimes they are. Like, for instance, uh, Kitchen Cider, Michael, he writes his own blog and he's a professional. So, you know, I like if I read, I know when I read his stuff that it's coming from a place of experience. But some of these things are not so much. So this one is not a bad article, uh, just something to keep in mind. So, but it's, it is very cool to look at some of that stuff and, um, and get ideas. And I think it's interesting for us to chat about and see what we like and what we don't like. Let's jump into the comments again. It's what we're an hour and 13 in. So we're going to, I'm going to say goodbye soon. Um, I already had my ice cream for today. So the ice cream, I can't, I can't go for another ice cream, but it was really good and it was free. So, all right. Oh, thanks, Jackie. Not yet, yeah, but I keep welcome knocking soon enough. Maybe. I mean, I'd be open to that, whatever. I mean, as long as it's, uh, as long as it works, I guess. I'm having a boiling water tap fitted. Awesome. There's hard water here, so we have a water softener, but the water supply should not go through the softener. It's a boiling tap, I've been told. Interesting. Now, I don't know. I don't know anything about plumbing and how that should be. Uh, but yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense, but I don't know. Seems like a waste of drawer space. I prefer a knife block. Yeah. Right. Maybe if you have a lot of drawers though, maybe it wouldn't be, but I like a knife block. We have a knife block. I think it's good. Would be a good idea. Oh yeah. Right. That's the other problem with that knife drawer is that 
if you get new knives, I guess the, the thing with that knife drawer is that you're buying knives that are probably very high end expensive knives that would have to fit in that. They're going to last you forever. Not the knives that I buy, you know, from Walmart though, you know, I have a knife block. That's a gift where the, the knives are really nice. Um, but if I was buying the knives, it probably wouldn't be very good knives. So I wouldn't want a drawer that's has cutouts for them. It would look silly when I buy my next knife, knife, uh, knife set display your knives on the magnetic strip creep some people out i think it's cool though yeah it's like why do you want such easy access to those knives there pal right beside your crockery we have magnetic strip for knives it works great oh cool oh we had the magnet yeah awesome i think it would be cool it would, be, would work good darlene's late but she's gonna catch the replay and she always gives a thumbs up and always comments on my videos and I really appreciate her. So thanks Darlene for being here. Keep some out of reach for kids too. Yeah. If you have it on a knife strip, that's good. Carol's talking about the LVP. That's a very popular flooring choice. I will say a lot of people want that type of floor LVP and it's not a PITA apparently. So there you go. LOL. Didn't know people thought they were creepy, but makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I guess we watch too many movies. So I mean, it could come in handy if you need, you know, you need them. Uh, I like our magnetic knife block. The only problem is that when knives get knocked off and fall down, oh, and chip the laminate bench. Mm. Yeah. How much does it take to knock off a knife from a magnetic strip? I don't know. I do know this. My camera doesn't like me. I like knife blocks that are put inside the back of your prep area counter. Very cool to see. The handle's up. Oh, yeah. Interesting, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> Some. Oh, wait a sec. Where are we? I see some about ketchup chips. Where is this about? Is it true that Canadians love ketchup flavored potato chips? Yes. Carol, I seen you. You said you don't, but yes. Um, I love ketchup chips. In fact, they have ketchup Doritos that are like only available in the summertime, man, oh man, they're so good. But like, they just suck the moisture out of your lips. So you're just like, <laughs> your lips feel like they've been through a battle after you eat, eat them. But, oh man, Jack loves, loves ketchup chips. Yeah. Saw a professional chef's kitchen, Prince Edward Island. Yeah, oh, cool. I don't go to PEI very often, but that's neat. Sarah, did you visit uh, PEI? Did you see Anna Green Gables? No, oh, it gave me not into the chips. I don't think not the not the not the uh, the ketchup chips. Um, this Canadian loves ketchup chips. Yeah, that's crazy. How in the states we don't really do ketchup flavored anything. I mean, which makes sense why, and honestly, it's not, it doesn't taste like ketchup, you know, really. You know, I, I don't know. It, it tastes like something <laughs> MSG, I guess that's what it tastes like. Um, but yeah, you don't do ketchup flavored anything. I mean, I know somebody, my wife's a cousin who puts ketchup on everything, 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 everything everything okay everything every meal ketchup is that the ketchup sound um he'd probably even put them on ketchup chips loves 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 ketchup but yeah um we do we we do ketchup flavored chips and like i said the ketchup flavored doritos are incredible incredible you can send me some install oh begins tomorrow and i appreciate all the tips thank you so much um awesome um congrats on that this is starting and you're 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 gonna get into the depths of uh, the beast here with the kitchen design hope i'm so I'm thankful that you watched and hopefully uh it goes super awesome uh and you can update us on it that'd be cool my husband wanted a magnetic strip but we didn't have the space well you could put it in another room <laughs> put it in the hallway 
I'm going for a boiling water tap at my sink, but anywhere you have flowing water coming into the kitchen, you have to have a drain. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, right, Winston? That's why that, that pot filler is a little sketchy to me. Thanks, Darlene. Where'd you... Oh, I just totally lost your comment. Uh, where'd you go? Ketchup, catsup, I don't even know. Am I saying it right? Catsup, catsup, ketchup? We, we call it, I say ketchup. Love that. Thank you. Uh, I got this from a company in the States, actually. Um, LVP is like a vinyl, it's like a vinyl plank flooring. Um, there we go. Luxury vinyl plank. Yeah. Really nice. I think in a kitchen, this is definitely the way to go. Um, anything ever happens, it's vinyl. So it's going to be fine. You don't have to worry about it. That's what I like about that. You can uninstall it completely fix whatever happened underneath that, put it back down. It's very durable. It stands the test of time. I think um, the test of time will tell that, but overall, I think it's a good choice. Your chat screen froze up. I don't know what happened there. Um, you know what? Let's check out this uh, vote. How are we voting? Steak is in 49%. So I'm having steak, I guess. Oh, cool. Went to PEI 25 years ago. Awesome. I probably did too, 25 years ago. Haven't been there in a long time. Wise Chips has all dressed. Yeah. Yeah, all dressed are similar to, to ketchup. I like all, I don't personally love all dressed, but my wife, Amy, loves all dressed chips. Next poll, ketchup chips. Maybe chip flavors, you know. Um, do you have sour cream and bacon chips in the States? Maybe that's a question we should be asking. I am not punking you. I'm going to Google it right now because it is a thing. I guarantee you. Uh, Doritos. Ketchup. There you go. Burritos ketchup flavor. There you go, right there. I'm telling you, they're so good. They're just Doritos, but uh, yeah, and they, like, when are they coming back? Because they only come out in the summertime. Are <laughs> ketchup Doritos vegan? That's how popular they are. Doritos fried, fried or baked. Well, they're Doritos, so they're fried. I don't think they're baked. Uh, there we go. All kinds of, there you go, pictures. Ketchup Doritos. And they are to die for. Uh, thanks so much for being on. We're going to we're gonna look at a few more comments, and then we're going to get going. But uh, uh, it's just us chatting now. Oh, Mark, you have, oh, you have, to, have you tried Miss Vicky's Spicy Ketchup? No, I have not yet. I don't like spicy, though. That's the problem. Amy might. We'll have to check those out, Miss Vicky's. <laughs> Comments are all over the place. We're talking about flooring. We're talking about ketchup Doritos. You never know what you're going to get. I know it's the end of the night, so we're not talking about kitchen stuff really now. We're just going through the chat. So, listen, if you're if you're on um, at this point in time, we're just in the chat. We're just chatting, and uh, I really appreciate you being on uh, at this point. Catch the replay for any of the com content, of course. I told you so. I told you. You should get them. They're great. We have sour cream and cheddar. Oh, yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, we have we have uh, bacon, the bacon ones. Really good. Really, really good. <laughs> no, I don't like ketchup flavored ice cream no that wouldn't be good phil i i definitely um i like ketchup a little bit but like i said ketchup flavored chips don't really taste like ketchup in my opinion they taste like something but i, I don't know what it is um so there you go you know what sounds more sacrilegious jackie you know what sounds more sacrilegious you know i want to tell you what sounds even more sacrilegious than ketchup Doritos you know what it is what induction range would you buy 
ketchup chips induction range. Um, honestly, I not super familiar with all the brands, so I, I couldn't give a real great opinion on the brand. Um, cause I'm not even sure what brands, if what brands offer induction ranges. So that would be something to definitely check the two and three star reviews from over a year old when you're looking them up. That's my best advice when checking out anything. I, I wouldn't be able to really tell you something that's valuable uh, cause I don't know Tracy, but I find when I'm looking at reviews to look at two and three star reviews that are a year old, that'll give you a really, or any review that's over a year old will give you a really good uh, sense of, of what range you should buy. I can't tell you. I don't really know. Oh, thank you. Yes. I appreciate that. I tr do my best for sure. <laughs> we, have, we have chicken and waffles flavored chips. Sounds crazy, but so good. You know, you're going on talking to me about the ketchup flavored craziness. This sounds incredible. Chicken and waffles. Send me some. I'll try it. Bingo. That's the one. Okay. Okay. All right. A real question from Laura. I have a kitchen question. I found some great cabinets at a great price, but I don't like the color. Is there a problem with buying them and having them professionally painted before installing them? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, if you're in the, if the, if the cabinets are obviously, you know, well-made and they fit the layout and the, you know, they cover all the bases except for the color, color is easy to change. And this is the best way to change them, have them professionally painted. So I'm certainly for that. I have no problem with that at all. Um, of course, if you're going to spend an exorbitant, exorb a ton of money on painting them and, and maybe not like if, if it, if it's about like the price of it, but generally that's a great idea. I have no problem with that at all, but yeah, professionally painted would be the way to go. I mean, yes, I know some of us here, even on here, uh, you know, I know Jackie, she painted hers. I think Jackie, you painted yours. Um, yourself you, you did I'm, I'm almost positive um but it, it most cases i do advise that they get um they get professionally painted but it's not always a necessity all right oh my goodness uh my opinions on kitchen flooring well maybe we'll maybe we'll talk about that in an upcoming live stream i i I don't, uh, that's, it. I know I get asked so many, so much. I'm going to have to bite the bullet and talk about it. I just don't want to make it so that it's, uh, I'd like it to be valuable not just, just my opinion. So I'll, I will consider some research into that. Very cool. All right, let's keep going with a couple more minutes and then we'll, we'll, we'll sign off from all the ones I've seen. Cafe has, cafe looked the most promising. I'm not sure what we're talking about now. There's been so many things that we're talking about. So, you know, I'm, I'm off. Sorry that I don't know. I'm not, wasn't sure on that one. <laughs> we are late to the ketchup chat, but we like ketchup, not the chips or Doritos. Tina, listen, you got to You got to try the Doritos. The Dorito ketchup ketchup option is amazing. Um, I'm telling you. Who, okay. Do you put ketchup on your eggs? At least answer me that. Is that something that you do? I don't personally, but it's something that a lot of people do and it's very popular. Anyway, you're welcome, Laura. Um, I, I think it's a great idea. Jackie says, yeah, come on, Jackie. So, uh, you know, the ketchup chips, you could store them in your OTR. We are getting a waterfall on one side of our island, but won't have floating floors in when installed. You recommend having them cut shorter so we can install later. Mm. That's a good, good question. Um, oh, wow. I, I would not want to install my flooring up to the uh, 
to the floating floor to the to the waterfall what kind of floor is floating floor oh that's a tough one best case scenario is that it can go underneath and that's definitely something to ask the fabricators about because it, the in my opinion, I would want to lay the flooring underneath the island. Even though it's floating, it still floats when there's cabinets on it. It's By floating, it means it can, it can expand and contract. And that's why you leave a gap so that it can move. And, depend, and if it's an LVP, it's, even, it's less of an issue in the sense that it, it, it's not going to absorb moisture in the same way that a wooden laminate floor would. So just because something's on top of it doesn't mean it's not floating anymore. And if it's in an island, then there's... That is that island attached to the floor. There's a lot of things going on there. So um, I don't like the idea of having the flooring come up to the waterfall. So definitely ask that question. I think it might be worth um, if they can cut it shorter, but it'd have to be like super precise because you want that to slide right underneath there and there not be a gap. So interesting predicament. Um, Ask the fabricators about that, what they can do there. Because I would rather see it go underneath, even underneath a little bit, just just to so there's not that 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 seam of the flooring so that the waterfall comes down. Good question. I can ice skate. I must have missed a comment about something. Oh, here we go. Do you ice skate hockey or figure? Seems all Canadians learn how. Uh, I can, I can, I can't figure skate, but I can skate a little bit. I don't like hockey, so I never really played or, or learned how to skate that great, but I'll go out on the river in the wintertime. So I like it. Ketchup on my eggs. Absolutely. <laughs> no ketchup on the eggs, but I know people who do that. There you go. All right. We're just getting in over our heads here. Oh, Cool. Uh, figure skate. I saw you. <laughs> um, have you done an apartment kitchen reno so you could undo it when you move? Mm, no, I haven't actually. Though I know there is a trend out there of cabinets that are removable that you can take with you. And um, I know I've gotten asked about that before. And I've seen cabinet brands that that is, you know, the whole idea is that you can take them with you. They're not fitted. So they're removable. Um, I haven't personally done that uh, for a client. And it's not something, at least in North America, that's very popular because normally the kitchen stays. Um, though I know in, parts, in other parts of the world it's not. So we had some fun tonight. Thanks so much for being on the live stream. If you're still on at this point, of course. Um, check the replay out if you missed some of the content. We went through 24 kitchen design tips Made easy, basically we're just chatting about some different design tips and there's lots of things to consider when doing a kitchen design. Hopefully if you check out some of my content, I'm able to help you navigate through some of that. Of course, if you are looking for a kitchen design solution, I do have an online kitchen design solution that you can check out. Uh, my website is, I'll throw it up here, www.mtkd. Dot ca. Um, you can check that out and find out all about it there if that's something that you're interested in. Of course, make sure that you do your planning and get um, as much uh, information and sound advice as possible when doing a kitchen renovation. And hopefully I can help you with that on these. So have a great rest of your week, everyone. Of course, this week's video is all about shallow storage solutions from Ikea. And um, I don't know if you caught my last video. It's where I talk about me quitting designing a couple times. And it was great. I had a lot of great responses uh, and comments on that. So thank you if you watched it and you commented. Um, you know, a lot of positive uh, stuff on that. So it's, it's, of course, always nice to see. We all like positive stuff. So all, all good. Oh, cool. From Alberta. Uh, awesome. Thanks for being on. And uh, otherwise, have a great week. I hope the weather's beautiful where you are. Um, I think except for Helen, you're in the wintertime, so maybe it's not so beautiful. But uh, appreciate all of you. God bless. And uh, we will see you next Wednesday, same time, same place. 
talking about kitchens and um yeah phil don't worry about the, the ketchup chip thing i i love it i think it was great i love having i love going off going off the beaten path is always fun so uh have a great super week everyone i really appreciate you being on and we will see you on the next one and i'll have a jingle made mark tobin kitchen design yeah or something like that we'll see <laughs>